Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me for pricing at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a watch that came out at Ball's World 2015 in a combination of titanium, resin, ceramic, and king gold. This is the Hublot Big Bang Perpetual Calendar. The Big Bang Perpetual Calendar has a lot going for it. First of all, it lives up to its name. It is big and a perpetual calendar at 45 millimeters in diameter, 17 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip across the wrist, the total distance is 57.1 millimeters. But keep in mind, there is a little bit of rigid flare to the strap. You can't pull it straight down, so you gotta take that into account when sizing this watch for your wrist. We'll take a look at it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. You can see it is a very big bang. I would not actually wear this on a wrist smaller than 17 centimeters circumference. I think it's a little bit too large for me, and you can see there is some lug overlap. So again, just to give you a wrist model, relative to my wrist, the watch is large. Relative to your wrist, it might be perfect. Just remember, you need a big wrist. Okay, strap. Taking a quick look at the strap, it is very thick. I cannot imagine it ever fraying or tearing. It feels like it'll last forever. There are character lines and strakes molded into the top, and as you can see, the cross section is immense. This is a brand new Hublot factory strap, and of course, you can swap out if you wish for a different Hublot factory option. They make it very easy to remove the strap. There's a little trigger located on the lugs. It works exactly like an automotive seat belt buckle. You just snap it in. You can go with leather, textile, a hybrid strap that has rubber and leather. They give you many options. You can see the buckle features king gold on its top. The remainder of it is a black PVD metal. As you can see on the underside, it is made of titanium and blackened. There's also gold. It promises both and it delivers. You can see that the chassis itself is actually an Hublot H, and then you stick the strap in, you tuck it in, you buckle it in, you close all this, and then there's no extra length visible, and there's no minder loops visible on the strap for a very clean look. Also, since you do have two triggers here, you have to push those to open the clasp, as the watch is very heavy and expensive. That gives you an extra measure of security, knowing your clasp will not fly open during vigorous activities. All the bolts on this watch, you can see here on the lug hoods, on the bezel, uh, all the bolts on this watch are in H fashion. You can see those H form bolts, and that is the idea. Just remind you who made the watch. The case flank has a resin insert, read plastic, and then we have a rubber shoulder around the crown for easier gripping. The rest of the case is made of titanium, the inner case that is water resistant. The 100 meter water resistant inner case is titanium. The outer case is made of resin and then king gold. King gold has a high percentage of copper and platinum, which means it's redder and more intense than simple pink or rose gold, but also that it will hold that intensity due to the platinum content and not fade to pink or rose or even yellow over time, unlike conventional rose gold. There's some handsome and nuanced bevels on the case, and you can see we have both polish and satin, so it's a fairly sophisticated thing with attention to detail properly paid. You can see even the bolts on the lug hoods feature a media blasted interior and then their rims polished. We have a little gasket between the bezel and the case. You can see the edge of the bezel is polished. The top of the bezel is satinated. We have those bolts with their double finish on the top. Then we have a sapphire over a sapphire. So we have a sapphire covering the dial, and then there's another sapphire underneath on which the registers as well as the hours are mounted. Let's take a quick look at the watch in the dark. Plenty of loom, including on sub-registers, which makes the watch a lot more useful. The timepiece features a a crown, which is a screw-down crown, automatic winding, and of course, with a chronograph and a perpetual calendar, it is a sporty watch altogether. You have the water resistance, the automatic winding, and the chronograph, and I guess the romantic complication is the moon phase with the perpetual calendar. You can also see the elements of the caliber 1270 Unico, the perpetual calendar mechanism, underneath the dial. So it's very transparent, but surprisingly easy to read for a full open dial watch. Now you have that moon phase, you have an indicator of the day, you have a constant seconds inside a radial date indicator, and then coaxial chronograph minutes with your month. So all of this is present and accessible at a glance. The watch does use a column wheel and a lateral clutch for operating its chronographs. So you get crisp actuation, and then you turn it all over, you realize there's a lot more to caliber 1270 in here. Automatic winding, 72-hour power reserve, 46 joules, 8 beats per second, column wheel, lateral clutch. It has a 
anti-magnetic and unlubricated high-efficiency silicon escapement. The balance is on a full balance bridge for shock tolerance, and again, it is beating weight at 8 beats per second, so there are no compromises in beat rate in order to get that 3-day power reserve. There are lovely monotone matte-finished bridges designed to give the watch more of a technical technic industrial look on the reverse side, whereas the front, with its satination and its beveling and its mirror polishing, you can see the module underneath the dial is more haute horlogerie. Uh, this one, of course, features a number of elements that make it very accurate, including full adjustment and an eccentric screw rack and pinion regulation system for adjustments of less than five seconds a day. And then for adjusting beat error and rate, we have an Etacron system, which is nice to see because that allows for very, very precise adjustments. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.